Hi everyone, it's Melinda. Today's going to be a really cool one. We're looking at septarian, um, sometimes referred to as septarian concretions or septarian nodules. Um, they are becoming more popular these days and more uh, readily available to purchase. Um, large, beautiful specimens like these from Utah uh, can be a little bit more on the pricey side, which is why I started with a little specimen. Um, and the ones from Utah do have like some uh, specifications to them rather than others that can be found in the world. Uh, so septarian, uh, like I said before, is a concretion. It contains angular cavities or cracks, which are called septaria. Uh, and that word comes from the Latin word septum, meaning partition. And again, that refers to the cracks and separations in this kind of rock. We can see them quite clearly, uh, and it's what kind of makes them so unique. There are other people out there uh, that believe the name septarian is derived from the Latin word septem rather than septum. And septem is, means seven. Uh, <clears throat> people relate this to the fact that the mud balls are cracked with seven points in every direction, and you can see that present here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, however, this is thought to be uh, quite incorrect. We do have other uh, examples of septarian nodules, such as this one that have, you know, quite a few cracks in them. Um, so people generally refer back to the Latin, Latin word septum for, par for partition. That seems a little bit more um, logical in this, in, in this sense. Um, so I'll start with showing you this little one up close. Not nearly as impressive as my larger one, so we'll get this one out of the way first. Uh, you can see there is actually a little pyrite cube right in the middle here, which I find really fascinating. You can see it shine with that little bit of a goldish luster, which is why uh, pyrite is often re to, referred to as fool's gold, because it does have that shiny kind of yellowy metallic look to it. But here's my smaller septarian, and you can see the outside of the concretion. It's been sliced uh, probably a few times. Uh, and sold in slices. Typically it is sold in slices. <clears throat> so when we're referring to septarian in general, worldwide septarian, uh, the process that creates the septaria, the uh, different cracks and branches that we see, um, still kind of remains unclear uh, on the world scale. Uh, there are a number of mechanisms that have been proposed, uh, such as the dehydration of clay-rich, gel-rich, or organic-rich organic cores, um, as well as the shrinkage of the concretion center, expansion of gases produced by the decay of organic matter, or brittle fracturing or shrinkage of the concretion interior by, you know, like an earthquake or a compaction of something uh, of that sort. I'll have a little bit of a close-up look again at this one before I put it away. <laughs> there we go. Here's my larger specimen, and these ones are uh, the more stereotypical looking septarian slices that you would see from Utah. Isn't that just stunning? So Utah septarians uh, do have a little bit more knowledge surrounding them specifically. So they're formed during the Cretaceous period, uh, 50 to 70 million years ago, uh, when the Gulf of Mexico reached what is now southern Utah. And deco decomposing sea life killed by volcanic eruptions had a chemical attraction to the sediment around them, which formed mud balls. That attraction is what caused these mud balls to be formed. And as the ocean receded, the balls were left to dry and crack. Because of their bentonite content, 
which is in the, the clay, the surrounding clay, they also shrank at the same time, which trapped the crystals inside. So as decomposing calcite from the shells was carried down into the cracks in the mud balls, calcite crystals were formed. And that's what you can see here, this beautiful honey yellow calcite in the center of the concretion. Um, so a thin wall of calcite was transformed into aragonite, a different type of mineral, and that separated the bentonite, the heavy clay exteriors, from the beautiful honey calcite centers. So this gorgeous brownish layer that you see around is actually aragonite. And it's worth mentioning too that sometimes barite crystals have been found in the center as well as uh, calcite. However, I would say this specimen is quite clearly uh, calcite. And you can see inside this hole the beautiful points of calcite, the beautiful calcite clusters inside there, little crystals. And again, this specimen has been, you know, sliced and polished. I'll show the other side. This is what it would look like without a polishing. <laughs> and again, we can see those nice big crystals inside there. Points. Stunning. right through. There's my finger on the other side. And there you have it. And there you go. I only have two septarian uh, specimens so far. But I'm quite pleased with them. I hope you enjoyed them too. I hope everyone has a good day. Bye!